What do you want in the next 10 years? What do you want in the next 10 years? Now under this, what do you want in the next 10 years? That is the question. I want you to make a list of at least 50 items. Now here's what I want you to do. I want you to just write as fast as you can. Don't give any much detailed thought to it of what you want in the next 10 years. And just let your mind run free. Now also remember this, this is not what you think you can get. This is what you want. If it all fell into place and you could have everything you wanted in the next 10 years, what would you take? If somebody promised you can have anything you want in the next 10 years, what do you want? I want you to approach it that way because it's not important to think, what do I think I can get? I want you to now think about what you want in the next 10 years. So we're gonna take a little time now for you to make that list of 50 items. Just, and put them one under the other, not side by side, but one under the other because we're gonna do something with this list when you finish. One under the other and abbreviate, you know, wherever possible so you can just put more items on the list. What do you want in the next 10 years? Everything from places to go to investments to make to education for your children, personal things, business things, everything. Now, some of these things need to be tomorrow, need to be this year, need to be next year, then 10 years on out there. Between now and the next 10 years, what would really do it for you? Everything you can think of, skills you want to learn, languages, residences you want to acquire, a ranch in Montana, a cabin in the mountains, and everything you can think of, from small to large, a list of the places you want to visit, revisit, experiences you want to have, fly the Concorde, bungee jump, something maybe you haven't done, but just put it on your list if it rings a bell. Write a song, write a book, write a poem. 10 years, benevolence goals, right? projects you want to support, money you want to be able to give, star in a movie, play in a rock and roll band. What would give you the most incredible life the next 10 years? A new wardrobe, a new look, start a new family. Larry King, you know, he has breakfast where I have breakfast at Nate and Al's. We've had a chance to talk a few times. He just start, he's starting a brand new family. I don't know how old he is next to God. I mean, he's getting pretty old, but it's unbelievable. Jerry Lewis, what, 72 or 73? And he's got a little girl. Danny's her name. Jerry Lewis, a little girl. Now, maybe that wouldn't do it for you, but you know, what, what would do it for you? What would give you the greatest satisfaction, pleasure, joy, live an unbelievable life? What would that list be the next 10 years? You know, habits you want to change health you want to acquire. And remember, if you've been to my other seminars, right? A little revenge I talk about on your goal list. I had some of that when I first started doing these goals. A little revenge. People who said I couldn't do it. Couldn't wait to get my new car, drive it up on their lawn. <laughs> Satisfaction. Budget finance used to harass me. I finally got the money put together, put it in the in small bills in a big briefcase. Walked into this guy's office one day, dumped this pile of money all over his desk, out of my briefcase. I said, count it. Turned around, walked out, never asked for a receipt. Someday you just got to bury somebody in the money. Satisfaction. David the King said, God prepares my table for me. What a scene. David said, God prepares my table for me. But that's not the end of the story. What's the rest of it? Got some scholars here. Sure. God prepares a table before me. What? In the presence of my enemies. See, you got to put that on your list someday. The new translation reads, in their face. Isn't that an incredible scene? In the presence of my enemies. Let them look at this scene. Whatever it is, satisfaction. My Japanese friend, Toru Ikeda, right here, San Jose, years ago, put on his first list, a Caucasian gardener. I said, go Toro. So good. So what would do it for you? Upstairs maid, downstairs maid. Chauffeur, cook. A cook, you can't believe. Wouldn't take that much to have a full-time cook. Take care of everything so you can devote your time to other things. 
if, if that pleases you. You know, Mark Hughes, my friend, has got this mansion and all this help, but that's not my style. Right? You drink a cup of coffee, you can't even set it down. Somebody comes, takes it away. It's, that's too much help for me. I, I don't need that much help, but it suits Mark. So. But what would do it for you? Learn a new craft. Develop a whole new career. Greatly advance your present career. In the next 10 years, just keep making the list as many things as you can think of. Little things, insignificant to someone else, important to you. One of my goals was to have a residence in each of the four seasons. Spring here, summer here, autumn here, winter here. If you could have whatever you wanted to make your life unbelievably unique in the next 10 years, what would you take? Somebody said, you can have anything you want in the next 10 years, what is it? But you can't have it if you can't think it, if you can't, you know, describe it, if you know, if you can't put it on paper. The ancient script says what? To the believer, everything's possible. Remember now, some close at hand, some not far away, some on out there. This is over 10 years now, over 10 years. That's a big chunk of time. How many chunks of 10 do we have? About 10. 10 chunks of 10, that's about it. Of course, with what's happening in science and technology and nutrition, you know, we may get that other 20, 30 years before long, 110, 20, 30. I read in scripture back when they lived to be 800, 900 years old. I don't know how come I come in this, in these generations where we get shortchanged. If I have a chance, I'm gonna complain. How come they got 800, I got 80? That, that doesn't sound fair. But anyway, I may not have a chance to ask, but if I do get a chance, I'm gonna ask. But in this brief life we have, we wanna fill it up with as much progress and achievement as possible. Not just for ourselves, but to reach out and touch everyone we possibly can. Okay, does anybody have 50 items yet? Okay, we're doing pretty good. Another couple of minutes now. Cause you can put a lot more items after we do this workshop, you'll see where you, know, you don't have to stop where I stop. If you're doing it and you've got plenty of time, you just you just go on and on. Keep coaching. Say, what about this? You say, oh, somebody says, oh, yeah. And they start that. And you say, what about this? And you say, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, I'd like some of that, too. Just That's what the workshop is for. Stimulate your imagination. Ten years. It's amazing. See, kids by now have about nine pages already full. Adults are something else. You, you got to squeeze this stuff out of adults. Kids will have on their list things you don't even know exist, right? Okay, put a little star there now, which means continue this later. You don't have to just be shortchanged on this list. I mean, this list can go on and on and on. And if you're working this workshop and you've got plenty of time, you just, you know, give it plenty of time till everybody's pretty thoroughly, you know, ready now with this list. But now here's what I want you to do with this list. I want you to go through the list now, one item at a time, write down the list, and I want you to give each item a one, a three, a five, or a ten by saying, that's about a one-year goal, that's about a three, that's about a five, that's about a ten. I want you to look at each item, write down the list, and give it a one, three, five, or ten. Look at each item and say, that's about a one, that's about a three, that's about a five, that's about a ten. It doesn't have to be exact, just somewhere near or even if you just guess I'm, I'm guessing but that looks like about three years this looks like about five this is within the next year and this is ten. One, three, five, ten. this is going to be so valuable what's going to be valuable now is when you teach it you'll learn even more when you teach it one three five ten now remember, some goals are personal, some are family, right? Here's a family goal. Or the kids that aren't here, I'm gonna set up a few things for them that I know they want. I wanna help them accomplish. Then there's business goals, some recognition you may want. I can hear the brains working the way up here. <laughs> this is good stuff. Also, you know, if you're married, it's his goals, her goals, and their goals. Our goals, my goals, your goals, our goals. Also, if something's incredibly private, put it in code so in case this list fell into someone's hands, they wouldn't be able to figure it out. Say, what's a star with a circle around it? Well, never mind. It's Okay, now, here's what I want you to do with this list. I want you to look at each 
item that you've numbered number one, and I want you to pick out the four most important and identify them some way. Either make a new list of the four most important one year goals or circle them or put a star or something beside it. What are your four most important one year goals? Okay, now that you pick the four most important one year goals, here's the next question. Why? Why are those four goals important to you? What are they going to do for you? What will they accomplish? Why did you pick those? Why? Why are those goals important? Just three or four sentences. If we don't have time to complete it, you can complete it later. If you have plenty of time doing this workshop, you just take the time. Why are those four goals important to you? Okay, put a little star there now. That and those little stars mean finish later. Okay, because you can continue on with this, you know, after, long after this workshop is finished and then use it as a model to teach. Remember, study, practice, teach. Now, make these notes. Next, when the why gets stronger, the how gets easier. When the why gets stronger, the how gets easier. When people don't have strong, powerful goals, the how is almost impossible. The how is too difficult. How to do it seems like, you know, how can I ever accomplish this? The how starts getting easier and easier when the why gets bigger and bigger and stronger. Now make this note. Purpose is stronger than object. Purpose is stronger than object. Object can be powerful, ob object can be strong, but purpose is stronger than object. One of your objectives might have been a million dollar home to live in. Here's the big question, what for? And it's the what for that pulls stronger than the million dollar home. Yeah, you know, a home is a home is a home, but what for? What are, you, what are you gonna do with this place? Well, now we start with the details. And I want you to add this note. It works in communication, it works here too. The drama is in the details. The drama is in the details. Someone says, I've lost uh, 40 pounds in the last three months. We say, is that it? Those are the numbers, but what's the details? How did you feel before? Well, let me tell you what. Now they start the drama by giving us the details. How do you feel now? Wow, what a difference 40 pounds later. And this person starts to describe what it's like now versus what it was like before. The drama is in the details. And this is what you've got to do. A million dollar home, what for? So everybody can see it from the street? And that, that's okay, but there's gotta be some more reasons. What, you, what do you want to do with this home? And then you start to say, hey, it's gonna be the center of activity. You can't believe what's gonna go on in this home. And you just keep describing it. And that drama now starts to really tap your imagination. And imagination is the beginning of reality. You can't imagine how close imagination is to reality until you start practicing this craft of turning nothing into something, imagination into tangible, the real stuff. How close is the real stuff? You can't imagine how close. If you start tapping into this resource of your imagination so that your purpose becomes much stronger than the object. The object is powerful and it'll pull, but the purpose is unbelievable. We must all pay the price, but the price gets easy if the prize gets large. The price gets easy if the prize gets sufficient. God the Father might have said to Jesus, if you die and make the sacrifice, you become the bridegroom and you inherit the bride. I'm sure he said, that's enough for me. <laughs> the bride? Yes. Then I'll easily make the sacrifice for the bride. If I become the bridegroom and I get the bride. So the price gets what? Smaller, easier, acceptable if the prize, if the promise has these incredible dimensions. Then the price, what a small price to pay. It's like disciplines. What a small price to pay for good health. What an easy thing to do an apple a day. I mean, a few things gives you such an incredible return that the price almost disappears. Promise is stronger than object. You got that? The bigger and the more powerful the why, the how gets easier and easier and easier. If I said, you know, three weeks from now, we're gonna do another one of these two-day seminars, and any one of you that will get 
30 nice couples to put up the money and attend at this next seminar, uh, a cashier's check will be waiting for you for $50,000. How many of you could, could get the 20? You, here's what you would say, what? Easy. I would say, now we're going to do a class on how to get the 20. You would say, forget the class. <laughs> Just make sure the check is good. <laughs> Wouldn't you? Just make sure the check is good. Yeah, I don't need to know how. I'll figure out how if the money's good. And we've all got that kind of imagination and ability. Somebody says, make it worth my while and see what I can do. Here's what I want you to learn to do. Make it worth your own while. Don't keep waiting for somebody to always come by, come by, come by. If they do, wonderful. What if they don't? Somebody says, I just hope somebody comes by and turns me on. What if they don't show up? Here's what's priceless. Self-motivation. Somebody asked me the other day, who motivates the motivator? I says, well, in my personal case, I motivate myself. I dazzle myself with the potential of sharing ideas and what it'll do for my future psyche of getting all of this wondrous return from people saying Jim Rohn is part of my testimony. And it's not just the money and the treasure and the fortune, you know, I've already done that. But the rest of it, you know, I can jazz myself, my own spirit comes along and says, hey, wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be great? I said, yes, it sure would be great. Then I'm willing to go do another seminar or work myself to death. Self-motivation, self-control, self-development, self-esteem. And you've got to learn to work with yourself. You've got this capacity. And yes, it's fine if somebody comes along like we've done these two days and sort of stimulates and stimulates, but I want you to learn to do that on your own. Now, here's how you get better at doing it on your own. Do it for others. You say, come on, Mary, you've just been sitting around here. Let's set some goals and see if we can't stimulate you and get you going. She says, well, okay. First thing you know, you've got her going. Then you get somebody else going. The first thing you know, now you get yourself going. Teaching is, is such an incredible experience. You can't believe what I'm going to do from the imagination that's gone through my mind these last two days, teaching you, teaching you. Some things have become clear to me, and I've set a whole new set of goals. Incredible when you do it, when you teach it. Okay. Now, here's another exercise. I want you to go through this list from one, three, five, and ten, and I want you to count how many ones, how many threes, how many fives, how many tens, and then make a little tab list. I've got this many ones, this many threes, this many fives, this many tens. So go through and count them and make a list, a tab list of the one, three, five, ten. Pretty well done? Okay, now I want somebody out here somewhere to volunteer to give me uh, your list. How many ones, threes, fives, and tens? Right down here. How many ones? Seven. Seven. Threes? Seven. Fives? Twelve. Twelve. Tens? Eighteen. How many had no ten-year goals? Isn't that, this guy had eighteen. Isn't that interesting? That means he was, he did a lot of his thinking. How many ones? Seven. Just seven ones and 18 tens. That's interesting. Because he was doing more thinking way on out. You were doing more current. How many ones did you have? Isn't that fascinating? The kind of thinking you were doing and the kind of thinking he was doing. It's interesting. So now here's what you have to say to yourself. I need more tenure goals. I'm not thinking out there enough. And then you need to say, hey, ones, I need a lot more ones, right? Because I can put a lot of little things on there, right? And you keep checking them off every day, every day, every day. So this helps you to, to sort of get the idea that, you know, you're either sh thinking too much short term, which is fine to think short term, and you need to think long tens. And here's why you need some of those long range goals. When the early astronauts went to the moon, a fantastic accomplishment. Some of them had incredible psychological problems when they got back. Why? The question was, now where do we go? I mean, when you've been to the moon. And a lot of them had psychological problems because, you know, they did the parades and all that stuff. But when the parades were over, now what? So here's what they learned to do with the later astronauts, because some of them, you know, drank too much and, you know, they had some problems. So here's what they learned to do later, to make sure that the astronauts that came back from the moon had plenty more projects to go for after they came back from the moon. And this is what you want now, plenty more to go for when you've accomplished this, plenty more to go for, plenty more to go for. You should have seen my father's list in his 90s, right? He had a long enough list to live to be 150. 
what is that called? Plenty more to go for. Plenty more to go for when this is accomplished. Plenty more, plenty more. I'll never run out of objectives and purpose to go for uh, the rest of my life. And that's what this little exercise is for. Incredible. Your notes. Value makes the difference in results. Value makes the difference. You can't get more time, but you can create more value. Now here's the first lesson of economics. Everybody should learn it from the time they're old enough to understand what a dollar means. How to earn one, how to get one, how to keep one, what to do with it. First lesson of economics. We primarily get paid for value. That's lesson one. Bringing value to the marketplace, that's how you get paid. You don't get paid for the time. I know it takes time to bring value to the marketplace, but you get paid for the value, not the time. Now, since that's true, here's one of the key questions of the evening. Is it possible to become twice as valuable at the marketplace and make twice as much money in the same time? Could you become three times as valuable? Make three times as much money in the same time. Is that possible? The answer is yes, if. And it's always if, right? Life is known as the big if. Harry Truman once said, life is iffy. How true. And here's the big if we're going to consider it tonight. It's possible to do much better at the marketplace if you go to work primarily on yourself. And that's the theme of our seminar tonight. Learning to work primarily on yourself. People have asked me for the last 24 years, how do you develop an above average income? And the answer is, become an above average person. Develop an above average handshake. Some people want to be successful, they don't even work on their handshake. As easy as that would be to start on. They let it slide, they don't understand. Develop an above average smile. Develop an above average excitement. Develop an above average interest in other people. Develop an above average intensity to win. See, that'll change everything. Probably one of the most frustrating experiences in life is looking for an above average job with above average pay without becoming an above average person. It's called frustration. And Mr. Shelf gave me probably the greatest clue he gave me when I first met him. He said, Jim, if you want to be wealthy and happy the rest of your life, just learn this lesson well. He said, learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Then Mr. Shelf gave me probably one of the most important clues among so many things he taught me, but this was in those early days. Mr. Schof was very kind, but he was also very abrupt. And he had these interesting questions to ask. I'm giving him a little run day, rundown one day on how things hadn't worked out for me. He said, Mr. Owen, I've got the answer for you if you will listen carefully. And listen carefully, I did that day and for the next five years. If somebody's wealthy and happy, you gotta listen. He said, Jim, I've only known you a short time. But he said, it's already my honest opinion that for things to change for you, you got to change. Here's the next one, decision. And decision making is powerful and it's emotional. That's those knots in the pit of your stomach, right? Waking up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat, trying to decide. We sometimes call it inner civil war. What shall I do? Well, for progress, you must decide. The best advice I can give you came from a wealthy friend of mine who said, if it's easy, do it easy. If it's hard, do it hard. Just get it done. If you went home tonight and in the next few days cleaned up a whole list of decisions, that might furnish enough inspiration for the next 10 years. I found this out 
Many times after you've decided, getting on with it is easier than deciding. Sometimes decision is the toughest part. Here's the next emotion, desire, wanting to bad enough. And I don't know how to tell you to want to, that's something you've got to come up with. There's two things I know about desire. Number one, it comes from inside, not outside. You don't send off for it. Number two, I know desire can be triggered by something. Who knows what it might be? Sometimes desire waits and sleeps for something to happen. Maybe it's a book, maybe it's a song, maybe it's a sermon, maybe it's a lecture, a seminar, maybe it's the conversation of a friend, a happening, an event. Who knows? The best I can, advice I can give you is what I give my staff. It goes like this, welcome every human experience. You never know which one is going to turn it all on. Even the bad experiences. Sometimes from the bitterest experience comes the greatest awakening. So let down the barriers, take down the walls. The same wall that keeps out disappointment keeps out happiness. Let life touch you. Don't let it kill you, but let it touch you. Here's the last one. This one's powerful. Resolve. Resolve says I will. Two of the most powerful words in the language. I will. Benjamin Disraeli once said, nothing can resist a human will that will stake even its existence on the extent of its purpose. Shortly put, I'll do it or die. See, that's powerful. That could be the day that turns your life around. The world has a strange way of stepping aside when somebody says, I'll do it or die. The man says, I will climb the mountain. They've told me it's too high, it's too far, it's too rocky, it's too difficult. It's never been done before, but it's my mountain, I will climb it. Pretty soon you'll see me waving from the top or dead on the side because I ain't coming back. The best definition I ever got from the word resolve came from a little junior high girl in Foster City, California, up north. I'm talking to the junior high kids one day. I love to ask kids definitions. They come up with beauties. I got to the word resolve and I asked, who can tell me what resolve means? And I got several hands and they were all pretty good, but the last one was the best. Little girl, about three rows back held up her hand. She said, Mr. Rohn, Mr. Rohn, I think I know what resolve means. I said, darling, what do you think it means? She said, I think it means promising yourself you will never give up. I said, that's it. Webster, stand aside. That is the definition. Promise yourself you will never give up.